I, I don't. So you let the interview do But where's the loyalty in there? No, Tiamo does. I, I don't. Uh, Fana, you took a slap. <laughs> 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 For oh, but, but but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay okay, okay, cool, okay. <laughs> that, that would have happened either way uh, you would have taken it who? only myself and coffee would know the story and what i said to him so were you the one that got slept by coffee yep. yeah yeah you yeah, lost yeah, yeah, what you talking about at the time uh, yeah at the time i was like Shit, i never knew I that on bro. The road. at the time i was on the road with aka what happened that day podcast and chill matt g the ghost lady and len moleko Hinda, very many. Welcome to another episode of Podcast and Chill. What's going on? What's good? Uh, today, ah, you'll hear it in post. You don't need to hear the bobs, my dog. You don't need to watch this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. But I know you're a chiller, no ta. Eh? From you, from day one, eh? Mm. What was the first episode you started watching? Zintle. Oh yeah. Me too. Yeah. And last. No, no. no. <laughs> Hold on, you did Caesar drama before Zintle. No, no, no. Caesar came after way after. I watched Scoop. I watched Slicker. That was the first episode I watched. Oh, oh yeah, that nice. was dope. That was yeah, dope. I, I, yeah, I loved watching his episode. Yeah, but anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, today I'm hanging out with um, managers of some of your favorite artists, uh, just to get you know, like we're not privy to what happens behind the scenes, you know. So I thought I'd have you guys here so you can tell us what happens because I'm sure sh- a lot of shit happens, right? <laughs> it goes down, right, backstage. <laughs> uh, let me start by introducing Nota. Nota is Questa's manager. We've got wow. Pindi. Uh, Pindi is Nadine Kai's manager. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Tiamu. You might have seen him on our Black Friday. He's AK's manager. Welcome to the show, guys. Um, AKA Willy Cardiac. Yeah, you got a, like a whole roster, dog. Um, yeah. And a gospel artist by the name of Clay. Come now. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't manage any artists anymore. <laughs> first so question. Why are you here? First question I wanted to ask you guys is. <laughs> Do you guys like inherit your artist's beef? 100% to the fullest. Uh, For real? No, I'm nah. joking. I'm joking, no. You don't? No. Nah. Does your artist have like any beef? Yes, she does. Oh, a wh- lot. With who? Yeah. With who? A lot of people. Mm. Yeah. Boiti is one of them, drop. no? No ways. She drop, loves drop name. Why? For Mm-mm. you? It's not your show, Tiamo. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Why would you bring Boiti up? Also, it's not your show, Tiamo. Can I, I, I don't. So you let the interview do But where's the loyalty in there? No, Tiamo does. I, I don't. Uh, Fana, you took a slap. <laughs> for oh, but, but 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but that, that would have happened either way uh, you would have taken who? it only myself and coffee would know the story and what i said to him so were you the one that got slept by coffee yep. yeah yeah you yeah, lost yeah, yeah, what you talking about at the t- uh, yeah at the time i was like Shit, i never knew I that on bro. the road at the time i was on the road with aka what happened that day uh, it's just no more let me tell you something that you don't know after the slap keenan tried as damned as he could but five guys held him down because they didn't want him to return yeah but i think that 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 video went viral no 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 it's yeah, forget it about did, the it video did, being did. viral the video being seen is, is is one thing i'm just saying yo as for inheriting beefs and like a nigga standing up for you like yo at the end of the day you know you took a step for a nigga yeah. and it's not like you Look, took it man, lying down and he wouldn't <laughs> take it, it for wasn't. you and and i think i think um because i know the story you know what is and the story? And we and don't and know the yeah, story. You guys, you guys, you guys need to know. And just what you need to know is that myself and Coffee, we, we chat now and then. We hung out in LA one time. We were all good, you know? Like just were you at the luncheon? Nah. Mm. We're not that close. We're not that. Oh, okay. Nah, nah. But I don't know why you don't want to tell us what happened. I mean, it's history, dog. No one cares anymore. Yeah, nobody cares. He's exactly. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. YouTube cares. Nobody cares. Podcast and chill, chill. I'm an avid podder. <laughs> like, if I was watching right now, I'd be like, yo, go in, ask that guy. Make sure he answers. Give us the full juice. Were you in the wrong? It looked like you were in the wrong in the no, video. No, I'm never in the wrong. <laughs> no, so what happened? Though, it right. it, it did look like you okay. was wrong. Like. Let me guess Wait, what wait, hold up. Let hold me guess what up. happened. You guys don't actually need to press, so what are we here for? <laughs> we're, here, we're, here, we're actually here to tell you about... Oh, what happens? Yeah, behind the scenes. Yeah, 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 exactly. 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 Yeah. Oh, so, so, okay, this... I was at that gig, mm-hmm. but we left earlier, and we were sleeping over. I know you guys charted in. Ne? Mm. Coffee also charted in. So either someone was r- racing to get to the runway first and take off in their plane first, and then you then 
Went no, it. what I had heard, what had happened was that Drop. you got there and you were just like, uh, we're about to set up right now. And he's just like, this is my time. I'm still well within my time. And you're just like, yeah, carry on doing whatever you're doing. But like, hey, just put the guitar there. And he's just like, uh-uh, move. And then he said, what? This boy's, what? And then, ta-ta. So well, us. I See, mean, they all got different stories. No, before and then, you can, you're the one who can Before might, the slap, might, right? Might be before true, the might slap, be wrong. before the slap, nah. <laughs> and if that's the story, yeah. And I totally bullshit that because I was at Fact Durban Rocks, and then I saw Black Coffee walking across the stage to get the crowd to cheer for him mm. during Keenan's performance, mm. in the middle of the performance, and I was like, oh, what the fuck is happening here? I thought an altercation was gonna break out there. Nah, it didn't happen. It had to happen at the I Rock situation. Oh, same night. No, not same night. Months after Durban so, July so, was so one thing, so and then the other one. It was a series. It was a series, it was a series of events. It was, it was a build, so it was like a I watched up, it. Right? I watched it, and I was like, damn. For me, like as like someone who's known Siamo for a long time, like I thought that like that was totally unacceptable. I also thought like he should have hit back. You know what I mean? I felt like he was a bitch you know, for not hitting back. I was proud that you didn't. And how's the force with that one hand, proud, bro? You can be proud, but you can't take back taking that slap. Hey, and for hey, me, Tiamo. as a man, as a man, like, you know, at the end of the day, you can be honorable about certain things, but certain things you can't allow that level of disrespect to happen. You know what I mean? No, you, but we don't know the story. Yeah, but then... but then. No, no, no. The, <laughs> the first story, the disrespect started when, you know, if, if let's say, for instance, Nadia's performing, someone out of... The artist comes across the stage to get the crowd to cheer for them. Like, because I, if I'm Black Coffee, who's going to stop me? Hello? I'm just saying, who's the stage manager, the big tough guy at Black Durban Rocks, you yeah, know him. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's not going to stop Coffee. He didn't. He didn't. Evidently. You know what I mean? And he just proceeded to do that, and I was like, wow. Okay, cool. Clearly, there's really there's it's some ego macho ness about it. And like for me, it's like, yo, man, like I, I, I don't pray to anyone. Like it doesn't matter how big of a star you are. So, if so you do something you're wrong, you're I'm not gonna let you get away with it because I feel like okay, five years down the line I might need a job from you. Nah, I cancel you same time. Like I draw the line. I'm like, oh, okay, clean. But what had <laughs> happened is what we need to know. And you so, the only one who can tell so After us. all that disrespect. But and then he still slaps that. you. <laughs> but your brother knows that. Every time he says that, no, trust me. He's, pre- he's pressing this button. He's, pre- he's pressing this button. I'm like, <laughs> you know what you're like? I don't care if you got a I disability. Seen, I, seen I am like, I yo, fine. I'm not sure if he's invested if, in this if, podcast if that he really wants to get like, to do that. the content, the right content <laughs> out, just to draw the right number. He's like, no, sir. What? I need him to face Is he a producer of this? Oh, my God. I don't care if he comes up to my knee. I'm just saying, if you were to do something so disrespectful, and like a guy like Finzo is a guy who like he's <laughs> a music compiler <laughs> as well at least at FM, he's a DJ, but he's a guy that we chill with. You know what I mean? I've had lots of in, in, instances where it's like DJ Finzo is now on stage, he's performing, and I'm like, yo, okay, dog, listen, we need to catch a flight. I'm asking you a favor, ten minutes, nyana. Yeah, Finzo will say, fuck you, go fuck yourself. This is my time. I came on time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'll respect that. We won't even set up while he's doing his whole entire thing. But that's because, you know, we're speaking and we're honest with each other. But if Finzo at some point were to now do some disrespectful shit, you know what I mean? And then I come on, I'm saying, okay, clean. I see you're five minutes over your time or whatever. It, one minute over your time. At that point in time, he's a cancelled guy because he did some disrespectful shit. So I'm not even going to give him the courtesy of like, you're saying, yo, we're going to allow the band to think. <laughs> you I'm understand? Saying, I'm not even going to give him a chance to slap happened, me. What happened though? Because like... Wow. Yeah. Everybody got their own <laughs> stories. Yeah. I don't understand even why even you want to tell your even story. Even on social media, even on social media, everybody's got their own, you know, yeah. how they how they want to put it out. Oh, I think this happened. Oh, I think Tiamo said this. Okay, oh, you, you, you are this. here. Oh, I think Black Tiamo. Coffee did this. No, Tiamo, Tiamo. I think Black Coffee did that. Tiamo, you are here. You can clear right. the air. You can clear the air right here, right now, so we don't have to st- no, come I up with... I, I, I don't need to. You don't want to. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay so cool. no time. No, well done. You actually no. just told me. Can you confirm story. or yeah. deny his story? It doesn't no, matter. everything I'm telling <laughs> you is things I saw. <laughs> <laughs> it's not things I made. I things I saw with my own eyes. As for what happened in the altercation in terms of how it boiled down between the two of them, I wasn't there. I'd already left the gig. Mm. But so what, what I saw... You, what you're talking about is from a previous event. The previous event... The, was a bill the, the event that I was at, yeah. I knew he was on the bill. Uh. I knew, like, I think he came on after yeah, us. Yeah, but then we, 
He came on like, after especially us. Especially when he used to gig a lot in SA. We used to be on the on Yes, the bill, actually. On the bill, a lot Coffee like came it. on after us. I remember. Senzo was performing at the you point see, in time. Story is Greg screwed. Nate came your through. Story is screwed, Greg, any Greg, his, 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 okay, what's his manager here? came through. I okay. dealt him All right, cool. No, it's fine. Clean. We said, okay, no, clean. We'll um, play one song to get off, right? We'll leave it playing. I will exit the space. That's what I said to Greg. And then our band will clear up. And Which then event are you talking about? This is iRock. Okay. Where the slap okay. happened. Yeah, yeah. Nah. It's yeah, Greg yeah, Nate. Yeah, 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 yeah. The guy who used to own yeah, Nante or Amaros. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rekai. That dude. Yeah, sure. that dude. You know him very well. He used yeah. to book you mad time back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So, um, he comes through. Obviously, he works with coffee. He comes to me, clean. You know, we dap it up like you know, it's the usual etiquette. You know, when you're on the decks or whatever, clean. You dap it up with whoever. Okay, clean. You give them their space to do whatever it is. So I leave the USB in. I leave the play out track. You know, that plays while the band is unsetting up, and someone's gonna come and collect. The USB, he has to set up for coffee, so he wants everything clear. So I give him his space, you know what I mean? So as far as I understand, everything's cool within that space, you know what I mean? He understands that a band has come off. So I didn't see how, other than an issue between either coffee and Keenan or an issue between Greg <coughs> and Tiamo, see, see, that's they would, incorrect it, it, would, it would escalate to a point where Tiamo would get slapped. After euphonic. Oh. Okay, so no, it's euphonic, fine. Euphonic Let's was leave on it. the decks before... And Let's we leave it. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Okay. okay. No, it's a note. No, no. Let's so leave it. You've said this okay. Far, okay. No, okay, no. It's yeah, fine. Bad. Let's My leave bad. it. No. Let, let, let's Yo, move on. Nah. Let's move on. If either Euphonic <laughs> and Coffee came together, Greg did come. No, 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 no they didn't. Uh, well, Greg did come. Is this podcast with Nota or with Meg This Ooh. is Nota's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no we're thing. trying to get Tiamo's <laughs> story. Nota's world. Pindi. And He's so well invested. He's so well invested in individuals. this. I want to ask you, if that happens in a situation where Nadia yeah. is performing, yeah. and let's say Boiti's people come and they yeah. disrespect you like that, has that yeah. ever happened? What happens in the situation? That's never happened. It's never happened where oh we God. got disrespected backstage or on stage. It's by the grace of Halluja. Your behavior. Also, how you've Hallelujah. never put yourself in the line of that? No, so this is not your show. Can I speak? Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, <laughs> sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, I'm just saying, like, no, it's never happened to us. And, like, you know, there's some things that also you need to avoid before they could even happen. Escalate. Could it have happened? Yes. Is with it? a few artists, yes. But, when like, was if this? you don't have, no, I'm saying, like, if you don't have a relationship with, like, the owner or the, the stage manager, and just be like, before things get too ugly. Do me a favor. Give me this time or don't. Or else you're going to see other things. Mm. So it's never happened with us. We come on stage when we're required and we jump off stage when we're required. Yes, have we gone over when the clock says 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and she's still saying, yeah! Yeah. Yeah, and then like, it's literally just a, please, come, come out. We need to get to the next person. Yes, it's happened, but like in a respectable way. All right, cool. I want to start with Tiamo. Tiamo, how did you start working with AKA? So, <coughs> I used to work for a company called Fit Season, uh, which is actually his first record label and management company. So, and that's why I really like, you know, is it a better, is it a good term? Cut my teeth? Is it cut my teeth in the oh, music that's a industry? Technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My English is good, no? <laughs> 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 and that's why, so, so obviously I was mentored by Raphael Benza at the time. He was the manager and um, Great I went guy. on. Oh, he's amazing. <coughs> dope. Mm. And then I went on to to work with Beam and that's when I became his personal manager and also ran the label there and then uh, when that fell apart um, I started my own management company which is the T-Fact. Alright and then you Pindi how did you start working with Nadia? Um, I met Nadia in 2013 we went to the same um, advertising agency she was digital I was traditional and Nadia was digital? Yeah. Wow. So we went to the same interview and I was just like oh okay are we allowed to stay here now? Yeah. yeah. I was like okay uh, this bitch is here for my job because I was just <laughs> like oh how many brand assistants do you need? Uh, you just need me come on guys what's this girl here? And then she started first day, and I was just like, what's going on? And then we clicked from there, and she was literally on some, a girl, I see all of this, but I'm a rapper. And I was just like, mm, yeah, I see all of this, I do PR. Oh, and God. that's where it started. She was just like, okay, just plug me into this, this, this. And, that. and I was like, oh, okay, cool. And that's where it grew. And then, and you know, that with Questa? Because you guys come from way back, man. Oh, well, I mean, similar to Tiamo's story, um... I basically interned at Bada Bing. Bada Bing. Uh, with Slick and Smacks. Younger. For, uh, uh, yeah, me, is, yeah, well, Young and I were both interns. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, Younger and I just basically were great friends, I guess, um, to start things out. And um, we really wanted to see ourselves having some sort of influence in the game. So we went to Bada Bing and Ventilation at the time to help them out with whatever they were doing. But I mean, like primarily, um, it's just from a love of music. I started out like producing music, making beats. So and rapping, booking me for your and gigs, rapping. booking you for my gigs. I was promoting while I was in high school. Hey, he used to book me this nigga. He doesn't yeah. anymore. I wonder why. Because <laughs> you podcast. Now, <laughs> you so you know what I mean. But um, like yeah, uh, we met at Bada Bing, and then um, uh, when we left Bada Bing, when I left, and uh, you know, uh, he wanted to you know leave and elevate basically his career like as a standalone act that's when we became business partners so that's why i say like technically you know speaking to call me a manager would be like wrong because yeah. i've never been paid by a salary by him yeah ever, okay you know yeah. oh is that what the definition but, is but yeah. i don't get, so I don't get paid, paid a salary, salary too me too yeah <laughs> well me too you see, then you see you should have had the same chat i had with chris galakis Mm. When we actually want, like Chris Galakis runs Electro Mode, owns yeah. Electro Mode oh as well. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, like yeah. He's an OG. And we had a meeting with him, and p- he basically broke down like the industry, how it works, and everything else. And said, okay, well, you know, you're taking the management responsibility, but as far as you guys are structured together as a business, you guys are business partners, and this is how that works. I hear that. And basically, Chris Galakis laid out how we could. Speaking you know, of speaking of money, how do you guys actually make money? Okay, so I feel yeah, like it's a money. it's a two way um, street. street. Yeah, so like literally, there could be the personal, and then there's the business. So when you separate the two, it's hard in this industry. Well, for me, let me speak for myself, to separate the two because she became a personal person, and yeah, she was like my a sister, person, and mm. I was like, you know, um, yeah. And then it became a business thing as soon as we were hitting business deals. Okay. But how we make money is literally a conversation through each and every single deal. There's no deal that Nadia doesn't know of, even a booking. So literally, it's a conversation to say, okay, girl, I need to do X, Y, and Z. So what, what are we talking about? So you, bit, you get paid via commission? Um, some gigs, yeah. Is it? And yeah. Some? yeah. Mm-hmm. And some, it's a, it's a business partnership. I'm a bit confused. So, like, so if Nadia has like five gigs this weekend, yeah, do you get paid for so that? So that's bookings, right? Yes. So bookings, hundred percent is commission. Oh, right? uh, for you? Yes. Okay. For me, whether she got it via herself or you got it for her, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. If she gets her own gigs, then like she own must gain. speak to that person. She must. Okay. Do the oh, whole so thing. Okay, okay, cool, the whole cool, thing. Cool. Oh, okay. But as soon as you hand it over to me, I must work. I must use my resources. I must call this promoter. I must make sure that he's on point. As soon as I use my resources, that becomes my gig. Oh, you know what I mean. I but see. if she's coordinated everything from A to Z, that was you. Boo, yeah. And fly. And yeah. then with the gigs, you go out and get so. the brand deals. Yeah. And yeah, then so you work for, on that. For Nadia, mm. for Nadia specifically, because she's not the only person I represent. Yeah. But for Nadia... Who I else do you represent? Um, so I assist a lot of people, and it's literally on a customized package. For example, the Major League DJs. Mm. So not... I won't say I do their bookings. They've got like 68 million people who do their bookings. Bookings, okay. But if I do their bookings, if I find them a deal, if I help them with something, if I do the PR for a c- certain yeah. project. She yeah. does it for Questa as well sometimes. Oh, okay. She's done so it. So there's cross-pollination yeah, in your industry. Yeah, you yeah. have brought us some deal. Yeah, you brought us a yeah. lot. I mean. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And And KidX. And KidX as well. Yeah, you brought us a lot of work. Yeah, Yeah. so yeah. that's what it is. Just customized deals for everybody. So no deal, you don't get paid. No. No Why salary, are you nothing. Paid? And I think that's that's what's so very important about obviously I think management mm. is that if you if we swim we swim together if we drown we drown together. together so that's what I'm saying like a commission and I don't understand managers who actually take salaries mm. so like yo oh there's me. other managers who take <coughs> salaries well apparently I, I can apparently. understand why you why? need a salary like okay for me it's, it's, a, it's a very basic principle if I need you to manage something 
there's something to manage, right? Mm -hmm. And I can actually pay you a salary. And if I do pay you a salary, then you got a stable income. You know that this is how much you're getting. You know, with whatever the fluctuations are, we're not gigging January, February, March, coronavirus. <laughs> you got a salary. You know what I mean? We are gigging a lot in December and everything else. You're working. You've been paid. You know, you, you've got access to resources. As for like now when we go into the business partnership type of things, it gets really complicated, especially with musical acts, because there's a lot of other, you know, revenue streams mm. that are derived from the work that she, either the manager yeah, would puts do in, yeah, and yeah, the yeah, artist yeah, yeah, would yeah, also yeah. contribute to. So, like, let's say, fine, we've got a deal now. Okay, we release a record and everything else, and you are putting in work into that record and everything else. You know, it does a gazillion million downloads or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shit. Okay. This is, is that Osgido's calling. Hi, Osgido. Yeah. Hey, hey, he's hey, answering you calls must. during an interview. This is a real manager. Hey, hey. Ask him for a tender. Imali oh, no, Aim, so. guys. Imali Aim. In such a way, recording, man, Jimara. He's telling Osgido that. I'm going to take a wait, bro. Thank you, Lumi. No, but I respect that because he could have ignored the call, you know? No, but we'll continue. I'll say if Osgido called me. Yeah, yeah. How many people can say you're Osgido calling me right now, man? But but you know why I'm asking that, Netsiamo? Because mm -hmm. I feel like... So, yeah, okay. hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But, like, yeah, like, you know, yeah. with certain business relationships, you add... I, I'm so sorry. But it is Osquito, yo. <laughs> That's what I just said. That's what I just said. If it was Osquito calling me, yeah. I mean, I'd be like, if it was my mother, I'd be like... You yeah, understand? You know, like, me too, man. Oh, Beyonce, in this coronavirus, you've got, I can't afford to be she, not answering or, and understand. explaining to him that I'm in a recording clean, but everything he needs from me else into me. Shop. You know what I mean? I just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, there are some people who are, they are dogs and then there's okay, other. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, with that, with that, there's so many other contributing um, factors that you, you do. You end up administrating things like publishing agreements and everything yes. else because you end up following up on that. Yeah. But now, if you're administrating all that stuff, you're acting like the publisher. You're mm. actually going out to pitch work. And then if you put yourself in a position where you're not entitled to at least a share of that and everything else, knowing how all the other commission-based income are seasonal, and let's say your artist doesn't want to tour right now, doesn't want to gig right now. Mm -hmm. So now you must sit at home, not get any commissions. They just want to record in studio. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just so many. I, I posted about it on my Instagram the other day, and I was just saying, like, there's so many ways Layers. in which man managers cut mm -hmm. corners yeah. to enable the artist to earn, to enable the artist to earn and be able to live like a star. Because those are mm -hmm. two different things. Yeah. Sure. You can earn and be good and be able to pay all your bills and then be. to live like a star. I mean, like, I... I don't even want to comprehend how much it costs to be Nadia because, like, mm. I, I don't really work... I haven't worked with many female artists, but the few that I've worked with, it's, it's ridiculous. Okay, with what yeah. you are saying, yeah. mm. wouldn't you... Tiamo, don't you think it would be right to... Because it sounds to me like you guys are business partners. And here's what I'm saying, right? I've got this podcast. I've taken it uh, creative-wise to the best I can. Mm -hmm. But if I were to partner with you, mm. I know for a fact you could have, like, five deals on the table for me you know yeah. already that takes a podcast to now another level yeah. and isn't that more than management it's now becomes a business partnership because without you i wouldn't have those deals yes but that's how you tailor the deal right yeah um like it, it all depends like for me my contracts actually say that we are not partners that we are i'm um, actually more of an agent a freelancer and it's very explicit in that that i'll take commission exclusively and anything that's very entertainment based so if you start a car wash somewhere, like, yo, my brand or my working didn't do anything for you yeah. to actually start the car wash. Well, 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 well I, mean, I mean, look, you can, you well, can, you can, well I mean, I mean, the fact that you are now this big brand who can exactly. start a car wash and, and you help build the mean, brand. You build it, like, you're a business manager. Are you not even going to look out for me? You're a personal manager, you're a business, business manager. partner. You're you're business. Business. What I'm trying to say is these brands wouldn't be the way they are now without you guys. Yeah. So then, is that not a partnership? It's not a partnership unless you say it's a partnership. Yeah. Oh. How you tailor the deal for, mm. that's what I'm saying, every conversation, every mm. deal, like, yeah. every Thank conversation, you. every deal, every gig that you break for your artists, it needs to be said. Nothing can just go like, oh no, I just assumed. You know what I mean? Like, every single thing that you speak about and that you break for an artist, it needs to be a conversation because 
I'd like to believe like artists are not stupid. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And you need to be able to have a transparent relationship with the person to say, okay, my dog, you can do this, but I'm not interested. So whatever you do, don't involve me and take 100%. Once you involve me, this is what my cut is. Yeah. Do you think you guys that should get more shine though? I feel like you're unappreciated. Shine way on TV. But you, you're doing, you're doing your radio. job. You, you're doing, you're doing it and you're getting paid for it. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I think I think that's it. I mean, um, I think other people maybe might actually, depending on who you are, some people love the shine, mm. some people want to be on the screen, so whatever. Mm. I personally maybe just want to be behind the scenes, working. Yeah, that's it. You know, working. Um, maybe like other managers as well who are, who decline to be here, they probably are just <laughs> working. <laughs> And that's, uh, all that's, all, that's all. They that's all they want to do. <laughs> no, but I didn't. No. <laughs> Look, I I, I think it like be right now, now <laughs> right <laughs> now, <laughs> nah, um, managers do get the shine. Like every time there's a dispute, every time there's a conflict, every time there's a fight, you know, it's always in the front page of the paper. This manager did this. This mm. manager did this. This manager did that. And for me, I feel like you know, um, the inner workings have always been trade secrets. And right now, how the world is now exposing itself to authenticity and actually getting the true narrative behind the workings of the industry. Yeah. 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 You yeah. need to see every single facet of it. And mm -hmm. it's informative. It also helps. And a lot of um, artists don't really actually have proper managers. So that's mm -hmm. why those managers can't even stand for themselves. It's yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, it's a buddy of mine who I just brought along or some guy I've known from a long time. You know what I mean? Yeah, my, my mother was managing me for the longest time. You know what I mean? And, and, and now, know. as as much as she's well-intentioned, I'm sure she's got the best interests for you, right? She, is she really qualified to manage no. someone? Not but she could bring me to a certain level where she can say to somebody, okay, you take over because... Yeah. I she was just handling yeah. invoices. Yeah. Which is they great. were flooding in. That's admin. Which is like great. Some, yeah. some people call themselves managers, but all they do is booking administration. 100%. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, that's so what is a manager then? So a manager, right, is a person who manages <laughs> all the operations <laughs> no, shit, of the business, like actually sits over each and every single aspect of it. Like whether it be your bookings, whether it be endorsement deals, they'd be representing you, they'd be um, they're in the trenches. Yeah. They're in the trenches. So they're in the slaps. entire ecosystem of the music business that really yeah. goes on. So not just bookings or live shows or whatever. Yeah. Not just music and going to the labels and shopping and whatever, but really like, yo, publishing, mm. the entire music. So if you're going to put out an album if you want to put out merch you know he's mm. he's you know he, he's the one who's the entire system and really overlooks everything so that he's the, the CEO. business the business really um, um, runs and it's really you know profitable yeah. and so forth so really every facet of the business that's affecting the artist do you guys ever lock heads with the artist because i'm sure you have a certain vision for that person's brand and so do they all the time yeah what do you guys lock heads about all the time um i just think Purely because you're managing somebody who's got their own brain, who's got their own vision, and that changes every single day. They're not flat characters. They're round characters, especially when you're dealing with artists. They're very sensitive about their art, you know. Um, so you can agree on Tuesday that this is the plan. And they wake up Wednesday morning and they, s and they feel. And they say... Mm, I'm actually not 100%. And it can go the other way. But now you're managing this person. They are technically the last full stop. Mm. But also, hello, there was a plan. Because you like literally dreamt up this plan. You guys went through it. You consulted What was the last thing you guys thought about, you and Nadia? Um, or disputed? Let me not say Disputed. Fight. Nadia and I, Nadia and I. Oh, there's a lot. But like, oh. The last, the last thing. Oh, okay. So because I do um, her PR as well, it's interviews. Okay. So Nadia sometimes will feel like, mm, no, I don't. I, I feel like that's not necessary, you mm. know. Or oh, that interview is not really relevant. I know what the numbers are. I know. Hence, you want to run the podcast <laughs> twice. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not the reason. And you know, don't be shady. <laughs> But like yeah. I'll I'll see I'll say okay the reason why we're doing a PR run the reason why we're doing a media run is because we need to hit these mm. markets whether they're playing your song or they're not maybe when you go do we have an influence and we say okay cool mang mang compiler from whatever FM 
I can have that conversation. You have a conversation with the presenter and your listeners. Mm. That changes a lot of minds. Mm. It's not about maintaining. It's about also retaining and mm. getting people that were never fans. And she can literally wake up and say, mm, and nah. And who's, t- who's texting you? Tell me. Black coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I'm, not, I'm not so privileged as no to, to be getting calls and texts from legends in the game. You know, like yeah. I, no, but this I'm, is I'm like a tough one, it. hey. Like we can it. literally also have our meetings during this interview. Yeah. So just hold on, you Yeah, yeah. That's a good manager. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then, and then, what is the last dispute you had with AK? W- with AKA, oh man, it was probably over. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, it was probably over a booking, maybe. Mm. Um, was it over a booking? Oh, man, I don't want to be booked here. I don't want to be booked there. Oh, man, who put me that? Probably something like that. Uh, we have, you know, he's he's very specific of where he wants to really perform, where he really wants to go. And Is so it forth. ever a money thing? It's never. It's never a money thing? No. Nah, it's really... Do I really want to be there or no, nah, I don't no. want to be there? Is that a market for me or is that's not a market for me? Okay. And uh, yeah. T- t- tell so me about like when you guys do the rollout of releasing the songs. Because I was listening to a podcast that Noto was saying mm-hmm. and he was talking you about. Do podcast, bro? Uh, no, no, podcast. <laughs> no, the, the, he was being interviewed. Oh, oh. oh I was on another podcast. Yeah, and he mentioned <laughs> that um, he was planning to release in Feb, but then MT released. And no, then I was planning to release in December. Yeah, explain explain no, what happened. In November. Explain what happened. Oh, okay. 2019. This is 2015. Oh, jeez. So, now the story is this. <laughs> MT is about to drop. We do this match. Nah, after the match at Vitz, we go to Keenan's house. I say, shit, gents. It's there's this song on the top of the charts, number one. Mm. It's beating baddest. Mm. Keenan's there, Tiamo's there. Oh, it's called Roll Up. Kenan's like, yo, Tiamo, check. Tiamo checks. Uh, he checks, but he checks last week's numbers. <laughs> Saying this is right now, as we speak right now. He's like checking the week, because the charts come out weekly. Yeah. And you can also get the monitoring daily as well. So I was checking on the daily monitor thing. Mm. At the end of the day, th- th- at the end of that week, Roll Up did go to number one. But on that moment, it was number one. Mm. And I was like, shit. Ahosi is coming to with too much fire. <laughs> and we got too many plans for Dakar 2. We really want to sweep the game with this album. We, re- we don't want nobody to mess that up. And if this, there's this hot new kid, you mm. know what I mean? And something about having, like, if, you, if you're an old artist and you go against new artists, you can lose. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all champion the underdogs. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, exactly. So now if you want to be the perennial underdog as well, you need to let other dogs have their day. So we let MT have his day, let Ambitious have their day, mm. and then drop the album the next year. Do, do you have a story like that whereby like, you want to drop something, but Casper's dropping something, for example, in the day? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. <coughs> yeah, I mean, th- there are cases like that. But Make I my mean, Raj spokesperson. I mean, also... <laughs> <laughs> Why is Siaba even here? Yeah, actually, you know. <laughs> why? Tell the truth. That's why I'm here to make sure he tells everything. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, boy, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. You can correct me, but I mean, some artists really have faith and really believe in their music so much, and they just want to let it out to the world, okay. right? Um, they don't care if Justin Bieber is. I mean, I have an instance where AK was dropping on the same day as Nasty C, and the way. Which know, song was this? Albums. Oh, albums. Oh, oh. shit. Yeah, it was. We're, we're leading up to Touch My Blood. Mm. Leading up to touch my blood, I think he was dropping something on Daddy. the d- on the day. He dropped the next week. Daddy. He dropped the single. We, no, we conti- we continued to drop on the same day. However, we we went more for a Spotify rollout, mm-hmm. and then they went more for an Apple Music because Apple Music was giving them oh, the a lot of the video yeah. exclusive. Yeah. So we did like a whole Spotify, and Spotify had just been introduced to South Africa. How did you know that he was doing all of those moves? Because yeah. we are we, we are on the ground. Okay, cool. We are, you watch know? everybody. <laughs> no, I understand that, but like... Yeah, so, I mean, um, business-wise, it's, 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 it's practiced a lot where we push back releases and so forth. But I, we definitely know that artists think that they're the best thing in the world. I mean, even even Matome there in Atrishville <laughs> is thinking it's going to drop. And <laughs> I've got the hottest song. I'm going to be the biggest artist in the world. <laughs> And we never heard of this dude, but he's going to be like the biggest thing. And every artist is exactly like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you go to radio stations and you sit down with the compilers, you, 
this compiler is saying, yo, even the guys that we don't know are saying, yo, I've got the biggest record of the year. The record of the, <laughs> I've got the next biggest record of the year. Mm. And I think um, every, every artist is really like that. So obviously we do come in as management to advise to say, okay, cool, let's hold back on that. But at the, like, like she said, um, sometimes the, 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 but artist, do, do, the artist has the final do, do you have an empty story where, you, where like Nasty was about to drop and you're like, fuck, we can't fuck with this kid. We got to hold back, man. I was saying that. You were saying I that was, uh, particularly, particularly for that, for but, the, my but the artist was like, "Nah, yeah, let's go." Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. And and, and, and oh, you, shit, yeah, it happened that like in most Texas. recently. Actually, shit. it happened with um, the Rouge and Nadia. What is it? Same day drop, forty bars and oh, is yes, that the one, beef you're one talking one about? One. No, 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 no. That no. Oh, no. there's a Nadia and Rouge beef. Oh, if you know Nadia, you know Nadia. Oh, shit, Allah. Does it go the other way around? Hey. Who cares? There we go. That's so, so what was <laughs> happening in that meeting? <laughs> Take no, no, me in no. That so, meeting. like, it was a thing where you pick out a date, and people need to understand this. When you pick out a date, you are literally saying, best case scenario. Surely nobody else is. Or are they? People can't say. Or they will say. Or there's maybe. You know what I mean? So, when you pick out a date, to get... Apple, Spotify, Deezer, and Jukes to put you on covers does not take one day, mm. right? It's a process. You, three weeks. You know what I mean? There's an Ebro who's involved. Where I say, Ebro, rap life. We mm. need to be on that playlist because that's how we're releasing. That doesn't take... Just because Rouge released on the 28th. No, not here. No. When did we have this conversation? Way before we knew Rouge was released. You know, yeah. I can't call an Apple and say, okay, cancel all of that and shut it down. You know, yeah. and it will take a knock for somebody who'll be like, I don't want this chat. So Nadia had a, I don't want this chat where people think, oh no, just because Rouge and no, Nadia. She said, I don't want it. So like, can we move our date? And I'm just like, honey boo, there's not one person. There's like 68 million pieces in this thing for you to say, let's just quit it. And she was just like, okay, we're going in. I I hear you Uh, guys. So there's there's a a part. I've got a situation. Yeah, tell us. I've got a situation where um, we're dropping the Kid X album. And MT then dropped on the same day. Just so that MT could have a number one screenshot and Kid X would post the number two screenshot. Um, same situation, like he moved his album a week forward. Same situation happened um, because I was working very closely with PH, um, Raw X, you know, while he was working on the Shoma Josie album, you know, as well, and trying to get that done and ready. And then obviously, Java then miraculously moved his album release date to the same day as Shoma Josie's. And I was like, okay, Hossi. I see. Who's yeah. Kosi? Yeah. The owner Kosi of Ambitious. The owner, founder oh. of Ambitious. So like, but also, you know, I mean, it does happen like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, very recent, I dropped a debut single for Slay, who's like a gospel artist, right? So um, no one cares, bro. <laughs> oh, every, 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 the sales everybody does. cares. <laughs> the bank everybody does. cares. And <laughs> at the time we made an announcement, by the way, uh-huh. Dr. Tumi, who's also like. A oh revered God. gospel artist, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. fill up what what, yeah, 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 yeah. everything. Hey. It's like the Casper of hey, gospel. Don't leave me hanging, bro. Right. Hey. I got you. I got you. I got you. You know, um, and obviously we have these conversations with artists. Yo, do you think we should go ahead? We do. We think we should not. Oh no, mm. Doctor Timmy is such a huge artist. Yo, you know, mm. we're gonna be overshadowed. You know, that kind of thing. Mm. But at the end of the day, let me tell you what happened. We said we toughened up, and we said no, we're gonna do it. We're going to work on our marketing strategy. Yeah. We're going to come out. And guess what happened? On the day that we actually dropped, of which he dropped on the same day, and Prince KB also dropped, I think, Urong. Urong, oh, yeah. Urong on the same day. We were number one on, oh, wow. on iTunes. No, but Shit. like that's right? gospel. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. It's not Dr. Because Dumi didn't make it. Jeez. <laughs> no, no. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was really a T-effect marketing strategy that mm. g- because she's also independent. I mean, she's independent. So we are her label. We oh, are her okay. management and so okay, forth. So oh, I, who is wait, she wait. distributing with? My brother, me. Uh, like, but what's your we'll distribution company? Ah, come on, Chief. We'll, we'll chat. Like, We've already had this conversation. No, but this is a real question. <laughs> like, no, this it's just like, come okay, on. Can bring I, it here. I, come on. No. <laughs> this man. Distro kid. Well, who? Distro kid. Yeah, he's distro okay, kid. Okay, I can okay, bring me the stats and then let's see what yeah, we Yeah, we will do it. Right, cool. Gladly so. All right, Lynn. Are you going to bring that? No, my brother. Ah, oh, it is Corona. <laughs> <laughs> But how do we Corona. seal the deal now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, 
we're, we're recording. <laughs> so, so listen, in yeah, the one hand, podcast go for? Uh, for as long as you want it. Okay. Is that like, are there like adverts that come in? No, I'm mm. waiting for you, for Iki to come so we can get adverts. Oh. So you don't get, you, so you don't get adverts like in between? No, 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 no. no. Okay. So, so in the one hand, right? <laughs> Yeah. We've got you guys, right? So you've got a business model. Everything is meticulous. Everything that you do is well thought out, well planned. And then here comes Voma Poris and Kabza, who just fucking release any single time. <laughs> they feel like it. How does that impact the, the, the game? Is that another way of doing it? Or is that the wrong way of doing it? Is it the right way? My Poris has been in the game a long time. Very long. I worked very closely with him like during the construction of the Dakar 2 album. Like one of the biggest singles on Dakar 2, Ngut, you know, which, you know, him and myself worked very closely on um, as well. And like during that period in time, like he was doing a transition where he was leaving Galawa, really trying to set up his own label and everything else. And like we really just talked through the entire business, the structure, what strategies to go with, like how to actually establish your own label, you know, um, and I consulted him a lot with, you know, the setup of his Black Boy music. with a, And then he did a joint venture with Sony, who we had a licensing agreement with at the time. Because I was saying, like, it's great that you're doing all these numbers, releasing all this music, and it's doing well, but it's not selling. So you're not making money off the sales. And at some point in time, you're going to need to actually make revenue off of these songs. You can't just give them away for free. This is, like, really going to be, you know, what keeps you sustained. Yeah. Gig stop. Mm. Coronavirus. Because you need to plan, mm. I mean... Mm. Yeah, we didn't think of coronavirus mm. back so then. this is before he signed to Sony? This is, yeah, this okay, is everything, cool. everything. Before he signed to Sony, how to roll out that album. Okay. You know, the idea was to do a home wave, piano wave, double album. Mm. Just like we did um, Dakar 2 as a double album. So the first disc was supposed to be home wave, and the second disc was supposed to be piano wave. Um, at the time, Snow, he was working with Snow Deep a lot. And like, yeah, but the piano sound wasn't really there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't there. Yeah. But Gom was pumping. Mm. So like, you know, he had the body of work. He had a couple of bodies of work. He took like songs and verses that we'd recorded for to completely other songs and put together this um, Gom Wave 1 mm -hmm. and Gom Wave 2, you know, to see out um, his deal with uh, Sony as well. But in the meantime, he'd been working on all this piano music and all these producers for two years straight. Hey, Mm -hmm. Can I get Without a releasing one song that is piano. Yeah. He worked on it for two years straight. So mm -hmm. he released Bom Wave while he was working on all this piano stuff. So at the point in time where he did already set up um, Lindo with the Sony joint venture, he'd already set up a Zinger with the Sony joint venture, he'd already set up Shasha with a Sony joint venture. Lindo ended up being um, the top selling artist at Sony mm -hmm. in the year he's released his album. Shasha is the top performing um, female artist at Sony right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, Zinger, you know, he's dropped a couple hot singles. He had like one song, which is I could call his first solo hit last year mm -hmm. with Black Boy Music as well as Sony. Mm -hmm. So he had done what he needed to do as part of the whole entire Black Boy Music mm -hmm. Sony deal. And he was now actually making sure that he runs his stuff independently. He linked up with Chris Galakis, the yes. guy who coached Jeez, me on this, this entire Chris. business. Chris is a hey, legend. Yeah. 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 Chris Galakis. And How do you know the other guy from... Uh, the Josie guy, man? Nope. Um, Lonster. Lance. Lance. Okay. Yeah, he's okay. also a, a guy who mentored me. Chris. Back, I worked for him yeah. back in the day when I was doing Elias's album launches. Remember then? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. get back. So, um, so after that... Um, they had all this music that they'd been building up over a long time. They also were working on something, Soweto's album, um, um, because he'd uh, recently got a deal with Platoon as well to actually do an album and had the funding for it and everything else to do an entire rollout. So they worked with him on a couple of joints. They're working with him in studio as well. So that's how all of that music came about. And since he's independent and they're independent, you know, they just decided, let's drop this music. It's hot. We can drop these projects and actually make money off of the streaming and everything else. You know, they probably had no idea that they would have all the hottest hits. Yeah. But, I mean, they had a pretty good idea that this piano sound is growing. And mm -hmm. with everything that he learned from commercializing the Chrome the sound, you must remember that. And Kalawa as well. Like, everything he'd learned from commercializing the Chrome sound, because this was the first time he was actually directing and putting together the music and releasing it himself. You see, with Kalawa, that was 
about Scotch, about Oscar and all of them putting everything together and telling him, yo, okay, work with this guy, work with this guy, put that together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was a different dynamic as well. You cannot count out Oskiro. Oskiro was the one who was instructing him on who to work with, how yeah. to work and the terms and everything mm -hmm. else. So after the home wave learnings, they learned that I, we can just churn this out. This thing is a wave. Let's churn out this music and then eventually lead it to whatever it ultimately led up to now. So the how did that affect you with the manager artist for Questa conversation? Yes. That was the original yeah, what I'm trying to say is like, like for me other. from the outside, it seems like Pori, like you're saying, like I said, like you guys are very meticulous in everything that you do, mm -hmm. but it seems like Pori just came fucked everything mm. up. Like there's no rule book with it. Yes. Nah, yeah. you can release a track right now. I just right told now. you the entire rule book. No, no, no. But that, like that's what I'm saying is that it was a, a long time. Oh. The reason why Bori was able to drop all this music oh. and everything else is because like he's, he's been working on this stuff. Affect you it as it a didn't. Uh, well, I mean, Bori is Bori. He works on his own stuff. It didn't affect us at all. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, last year we released one single, really, Ketile Ketile. And that sold 24,000 records, so it's platinum single. And it was like the only hip-hop single that went platinum But what I'm, what, I, what I'm saying, Pindi, does that, mm. does that not make you go back to the drawing board? Mm -hmm. In terms of like, okay, you guys, you push like a song for like six months. Mm -hmm. But here's where he's pushing a song every six hours. Mm -hmm. Do you go back and like, oh shit, okay, now we got to change. Or you still stick to your guns? Not a really, I got to change or stick to my guns. I think like with the music industry, it's about the feel and it's... Because artists are so invested in the industry already, they know what needs to come out. They know what they need to do as an artist. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say, like, we didn't have an effect at all. In December, it was a mafia. <laughs> okay? You understand me? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as a hip-hop artist, right, if you don't have, there's, there's like a bunch of promoters who will always stick to the same method every single year. Yeah. There's like your um, London Roots or your Chase Fest or whatever the case may be in December where you'll have like the bunch where you know you can count on. And then the low-hanging fruit, mm. that's when you see that like, I am a piano shame. Yeah. You guys came in and you did your damn thing because now they were saying, if... Maporisa and Gabza or whoever is X amount of money. Why am I still taking, taking X amount? Hey, Kespa, Nadia Nakai for 100 and want. Okay, let's just make it I'm a piano festival. Mm. It will affect you. Mm. It will affect you. And I'm not going to lie to you. The low hanging fruit went I'm a piano. December 2019, 100%. Yeah, and you still. I mean, every year there's someone who's got a hit that takes the yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been happening it's for a time yeah, in yeah, right. So when you like build... it's never a genre. Yeah. A whole <laughs> it's entire genre. It wasn't genre. the genre. Okay. Wasn't yeah. the genre yeah, because like piano, the, the genre. Cool, but like the cool yeah, you're talking about Gabs and Mapori, so you're not even talking about the genre. No, but I'm saying that like, okay, yes. I, oh, I hear you. The yes. only guys who actually really made it out of the entire piano wave, you can count all of them. Yeah. There's guys who are also bringing up their brands mm. and everything else. Jazzy but Disciples, they, MFR Souls. There's yeah, so yeah. many. There's but. so many. But the two guys mm. who cashed in yeah. really yeah. are those yeah. two. And yeah. that's how the game works. It allows certain people to have an exaggerated influence on the the, the, the sound of the music mm. and basically like also take all the gigs at a certain point in time. Like Zahara did that for once. You know? I mean, yeah. Zahara. She did that to us yeah. back in 2012. You understand? She came out in 2012. She did that to Keenan in 2012. Came out the same year. They went head to head at the Summers. You know, at the Metros. At, at the Metros, you won. <laughs> and at the Summers, she won Metros. six Summers. You know what I mean? She, yeah. she okay, hold on right there. Let's talk about the awards. What are the politics behind the awards? Do you yeah. do, do artists really buy awards? Is that a thing? Buy. Do you guys yes, buy awards? Definitely. Wow. Oh. Artists wow. buy awards. I'm, 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 like in Tengani right now, he's crying that he got 433,000 votes, right, for this for the song, the of the FM song of the Year. Yeah. And basically, he made half a million or more for SABC and Ukozo FM and his prize money is 50,000. Yeah, well, that's what you get for buying an award. If you go out there and like it, actually force people to vote for you, give them airtime, give them phones, all these things. And these things happen. I mean, we've been on the receiving end of many. I know at the Metro FM Awards, you know, remember, Mabala Noise, yeah. Nasty C, they cleaned out like four awards which we should have won, you know, in that year. That was the year of Dakar 2. We won six summers after that. But, you know, the art... The awards are bought, but and I think there's so I many people who have influence on the them. mechanics of how then how then do we really get those awards, right? So for the summers, for example, we do know that it's really qualified people. What so whether you're in the music mm. industry, you're a journalist, or yeah. you know, in so the board. yeah, on the board. Yeah. So 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 you do know that you know um, this affirmation that you're getting is 
from well-respected. So you can't buy the summers. Ah, uh, you can. They did oh, it. Okay. I mean, they bought record Ooh. of the year as well at that Ooh, same summers that oh, we oh, lost. Oh, how did? How did? That's the voting thing. That's what I'm getting. to. That's but buying doesn't mean that. You're buying. Giving twenty thousand people five rand worth of data is buying the award. You are influencing the outcome by. Giving money you are to rallying people, people to do No, that. you're not rallying. You are influencing the outcome. It's wrong. If you were to buy votes for an actual, like, a real election, if you were to go to IEC, uh, the stand post, and then everyone who walks in, you give them a thousand rand to vote for it. No, yeah. when you're you're buying IC, the, the, IEC, the election. When you're IEC, you only get one vote, and then they put a... No Either, even if it was no, one vote. When you're voting you're for a record of the year. So okay, fine. Influence. You're buying... If you are buying bulk SMSs to... SMS, the SA Hip Hop Awards. No, they you made, can know. They made the competition like that. You're buying no. the awards. You but you can spit this. You can spit this because you can give somebody five rand. It mm. uh, doesn't mean they'll vote for AKA because you said mm. AKA, I gave you five rand. Mm. You can still say, oh, I'm still voting for Krista. No, but you're, influ- your you're influencing but your you're buying marketing. influence at the end of the day. They do it differently. They have voting farms, voting parties, whatever, all that but type I of stuff. But I think what Makai is asking is, ask can you fans, buy the summers as in like, yes, you can. at Risa, at whatever, no, to say, hey, Mr. Whoever. No, how it works you buy it using the rules that can be exploited you buy it and you actually do buy and those it. rules are put in place by by those people rules who run that and okay. for certain, and those for rules are not reason th- those reason. rules are not those rules are not great they're not perfect then you need you to address that now addressing that also means also accepting that there are certain people who are unscrupulous in this business right if let's say for instance ne, um, nadia sells 50,000 records, right? She's the first platinum-selling album on a female rapper and everything else. And, you know, she does all this amazing work. She's, her songs are playing on radio. She's getting all the streams and everything else. And then some other artist who did not do all that work, who has not had the same impact on the society, who is not rallied for, wins that award, right? That is denying history. Like the recording of history, it will forever be recorded. You look back 100 years from now, Nadia will not be the one who won that award in the year she deserved it. You can actually take away someone's history. Have you bought an award? Never. And you, Pindi? Never. I've had and awards you bought from us. I didn't us. even know they buy awards, bro. Like, you didn't even know. Bought so this is new to you. It, it, well, it, awards <laughs> that we could have won that were bought and then it, oh, history, okay, okay. Well, history was denied. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. I definitely agree with you. There. No, I hear you. And, and that's the truth of the matter. And yeah. at the end of the day, like if you don't Where, where do you awards, think Nadia should have won? Which awards? Uh, <laughs> she won. <laughs> Wait, when did you guys drop the album? Says the Selena last year. So we won <laughs> last year, but like the summers, <laughs> I was just like, and nah. And like, it wasn't even about Nadia. It was just about, if Nadia doesn't take this, Questa, no, it was Questa has to take this, or Nadia. And then the other people Which won. Which summers? Hold on. Oh. Nadia's never been nominated with Questa. It was. It was best video. It was the summers. Best music video. Um, I think you guys did the spirit. Oh, the one when Rouge won. Yes. And I was like, I know, I don't <laughs> So y'all were angry too. <laughs> y'all were angry. Yeah, spirit we should have mad. won. No, we were How mad. were you not supporting no, Spirit? No, 100%. I was just Everyone like... Everyone should have supported Spirit. So we were... I was, I was expecting Rouge to say, listen, I got this award, but listen. <laughs> but listen. <laughs> yes. Yes. 100%. <laughs> so like Nadia as well, she was just like... No, Buffett, do, how does this actually work? Okay, let's break down the rules. Where are the terms and conditions? Because if we're talking spirits and we're talking something like Namin, I understand the two variants. And that's why Nadia was just like, okay, spirit came through, damn, you know? Yeah. But like, if I could take it, I'll still say, oh, damn. Yeah. But then when the third party took it, we were just like, oh, damn. Mm. So <laughs> I'll tell you a story. <laughs> we had the same situation the year before, ne? and like, um, they nominated two videos, uh, two Nasty C videos um, in the best video category. Mm. And I totally kicked up a fight. I, like, I fought with everyone at the office. I went all the way up to the CEO. I said, yo, no ways. Those videos were submitted after the submission date. They're, you can see if you go to YouTube, you can go to the no, TV schedule and everything else. And that's the thing is that the awards don't do due diligence. Yeah. And also, the awards is the recording industry of South Africa, which is saying? members are all the labels what put together. So the labels themselves, with their subcommittees and everything yep. else, fail <laughs> themselves yeah. and also are able to be influenced in a certain way. Yeah. At that year, when those two NCC videos um, were nominated and they shouldn't have been and they were disqualified later, the chairman of the SAMA board that year was the label manager for... Mabala noise. Mm. 
Mm. You, you understand yeah. that, you know, the shit fuckery that happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this is the actual issue that happens with these awards is that certain people can use whatever influence can use, either it be money. And with mm. Mabala Noise, you know it was money. Mm. You know but what I mean? Tim, when I listen to him, it sounds like there's a lot of backstabbing that happens behind the scenes. In terms of labels, like, you know, mm-hmm. is there a lot of backstabbing that happens behind the scenes? Backstabbing that happens, mm-hmm. like, amongst the labels, the like, sabotaging each other. I about it now when they planned this whole entire rollout for Nadia, and then they're releasing with Universal, and then at the same time, Sony, who's the rival company, releases a Rouge single featuring AKA at the same time to, you know. No, I wouldn't say that's but, backstabbing. But I think it's backstabbing. No, that, that's not that, backstabbing. That I know was, was planned a long time ago as no, well. No, as much so as it's like planned, as much as it's. Uh, just like, like you just like mentioned. You don't you don't submit you don't, you pitch in right you say okay cool I'm gonna have this date and then we're gonna pitch into our, all the DSPs to give us support on on all of this right yes I know, I know that and so I, forth, I, so forth. if anyone and knows this same, process I think the same of course I'm, <laughs> you, you are, so you what Mac G is asking about the backstabbing I love how you always come for I say my name I got you <laughs> what he's asking what he's uh, no 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 but listen ones. but listen he's asking Guti. Now, you guys are sitting in the same boardroom. There's a Universal sitting here. There's a Sony mm. sitting here. There's a Watt was sitting here. And we all know what the numbers is. Mm. And we all have the same agreement. But yeah. like, what kind of banana it, it is going to It happened to Java. It happened to Java. He was uh, like removed from a certain category. Um, and, <laughs> and in the subcommittee meeting, basically, he was voted out of the category that they'd submitted in. And then he was disqualified. But that. then he was only then um, put into the best produced album. Now... The reason why is because there was a beef between Triple Nine and Ambitious. And as you know, Triple Nine had an artist, Cece, who left and then went to Ambitious. Mm. And therefore, you know, when Ambitious needed those Triple Nine votes... Also, Arthur sits on the board. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) So when, when they needed those votes... And Jose was sitting there and he's like, Man, are you took my... Let, let, let Tiamo speak. What are you saying? Uh, what are you saying? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying that obviously uh, people are looking out for their businesses, right? Mm. They're looking out for their artists. Mm. Uh, they want to get future earnings, whether from bookings. So it would, if winning an award is going to get you like thousand bookings in the next endorsements. year, endorsements and so forth. Then Credibility. I think business-wise, everybody's going to like thing. fight for, for their business, right? But it's also a very small industry, right? So everybody moves... So you'll get someone who's at Sony who will move into uh, a Universal. universal. Yeah. Mm. Someone at the Universal who will go to one. Have you done any backstabbing mm. yourself? Have I? No, no, I'm a clean guy. I'm, I'm an honorab- honorable... It seems to me... me? Honorable guy. Yeah. yeah. It seems to me like you can't be guy. clean in this industry. You got to get your hands dirty. Yeah, I, I think there are very... You got to be tough. Very few, yeah. very, very few clean, very professional, um, trustworthy guys that you can work with, right? Yeah. So... A whole lot of the guys, they come in, come out, and I've, I've seen a whole if, lot of if, that. If, if um, you know AK deserves this award, but you know through some shiggy shiggy, Nasty C is going to get it, you're not going to do anything to defend your client? Defend, yes. Well, defend, definitely. And I know that uh, he actually lost an award that went to, was it Nasty, Nasty C? Yeah, that's Nasty C. Nasty C, and Nasty obviously, album. Um, um, you and know, the, chairman the, the chairman of the Summers sits, at that point was at the Universal. Summers, you know? Um, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't want to really get into the politics. Like I said, it's a very small industry. I'm going to bump into this guy tomorrow. I'm going to bump in. But whatever we can do in our in our control, right, within the parameters, we could actually do. So in, how do you in, in, a, in a business sense? So as managers, being in the game for so long, how do you think is the right way about doing awards? Like, what should happen? So there's are we, none are of we, this. Are we, are we are we having this discussion because now there's only one, literally one music award that happens a year. Well, the summers. Yeah. Oh, there's lots. There's SA Hip Hop Awards. There's oh. the Freemas. There's yeah. Metro. There's, yeah, there's, there's there's DSTV. Lot. There's lots yeah. of other awards. Like yo, there's like, style awards. You know what? It's not our responsibility to say what's the right way because ah. then we would be hosting our awards. Yeah. I'd be hosting the Nadia Nakai yeah. Awards. And, yeah, you're right. Um, you're the right. best bad bad. Yeah. Nominees are AKA. <laughs> best, uh, I mean, yeah. like that's not our job. But yeah. like, yeah. I just feel like it's gonna be a battle till the end. It's competition. It's beef. Whatever. All right. Mm-hmm. Let's sw- let's switch it up. Um. So you've got an artist. And then they go crazy. They go ape shit on social media. What happens at that point? Siamo, that's yours. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. No. <laughs> we are not qualified. To <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko.